consider the following. If the tongue is within the normal range for structure and function, and if it's correctly positioned, then an er is possible without the use of lip rounding. In fact, the client should be encouraged to smile widely during repeated er production to discourage lip rounding. Using lip rounding will only serve to continue former incorrect habits, and our goal is to break those former habits. When we reach the section that deals with co-articulation, at that time, lip rounding is incorporated as part of the natural movements between sounds and words, but not until such time. Let's see what often happens when we don't go this preferred route. The following video exemplifies exaggerated attempts at er production, and if you observe carefully, you'll see that other sounds have likewise been affected. This young man has had speech therapy intervention for several years before this video is taken. Might the methods of intervention used previously actually encouraged and caused these many extraneous and interfering movements? My belief is that it did indeed. Let's see. Ran down the road. The red rabbit went down the road. Good. Can you say car far? Car far. Good. Now try to make er. Uh, uh. Very nice. Hopefully you were able to see the exaggerated movements with this young man. Co-articulation from consonants and clusters to er. Earlier, the client achieved consistent pure er sounds. We now place consonants and clusters before the er. Now, why before instead of after? That means we're starting work with the final er instead of the initial er. Huh. Now, why would we do that? Remember when you had the client playing with the er in order to purify it, changing the pitch and the length and so forth? By doing so, he was able to correct the sound as he was producing it. He could alter the necessary lingual movement or the oral opening or the nasality in order to reach the desired er sound. So by placing the er after a consonant or cluster, the client is afforded the same opportunity to, to purify that er in a larger time segment. In the final position, the er can be prolonged as needed until the tongue is in just the right place for the pure er sound. What family of sounds is the next easiest to produce without having to move the tongue from the er location? If you came up with bilabials, you are right on the mark. Now we overlap the achieved goal, which is the pure er, with the new goal of consonant plus er. So it would be er, ber, er, her, er, mer. The client starts with producing the known er, then makes the bilabial by moving only the lips, keeping the tongue firmly in that er position, and following it with the known er. This will be accomplished almost immediately since he simply is learning to move from one sound that he already produces correctly to another that he now produces correctly. It is the transition between the sounds that is critical. Because we taught the client to make a smiling er without lip rounding, this transition from lip rounded bilabials to smiling er is easily accomplished. Had we not eliminated the lip rounding initially, it would have continued to interfere with progress. Thinking through how other consonants are produced, it's easy to see why F and V, the labial dentals, are next in line to be co-articulated with ER, because again, the tongue does not have to move from the F or V position to transition to the ER. This should be almost immediately mastered since the same conditions apply as with the bilabials. I wanted to show you this short snippet from a young man who had been in speech therapy privately and in the schools for several years before coming to see us. We had to work hard 
to eliminate the tendency to round his lips for the er production. He was easily frustrated at first. He lacked confidence in his ability to improve. By taking the small sequential steps outlined in the program, he became more confident and much more willing to practice his assignments. You'll see that I initiated this segment by dropping back two steps instead of just one. First, I had him produce the pure er, then to the consonant plus the er, and finally, the target words. So let's have a listen to him. Burr, lumber. Er, mer, hammer. Er, mer, hammer. Er, per, paper. Er, per, paper. Next, we follow the same order for the rest of the sound family patterns. Thus, fur, offer, fur, suffer, fur, differ, etc. And then we go from the F and the V to the T, the D, and the N. And we move on to the rest of the sounds and the families. And to get you started, I gave you one example for each of the sounds. You can add one or two more at your convenience. Remember also that it doesn't uh, matter if the child knows the meaning of the word because our goal is the transition at this point, the smooth transitions, the way it really is, for and are, in natural sounding connected speech. It might be the first time that a program has purposely transitioned this interesting way into connected speech, but the clients seem to enjoy this stage the most. Frankly, it's one of my favorite as well. Perhaps it's because the clients have the opportunity to sound natural by focusing on something very different than they did in previous stages. All of the stages are critical, but since this stage of R from basics to habituation is somewhat unique, it's highly recommended that the therapist practice aloud and listen to others' conversations so it can be modeled properly for the client. We want to be able to say this quickly and say it correctly and not sound robotic. Fortunately, we're going to give them the opportunity right here and now to do so. Too often, this is what therapists and others focus on. And at this point in therapy, there's no need for it. It's for the man. Robotic. We want them to become natural sounding like this. It's for the man. Listen once more. Robotic. It's for the man. And we want them to go into the natural. It's for the man. Next example. What are you talking about? Should be rather. What are you talking about? Next example. Bill and Jane are heading home now. Hopefully can now become. Bill and Jane are heading home now. And let's listen to these three natural ones once more. It's for the man. What are you talking about? Bill and Jane are heading home now. And now we move into stage five, difficult words, including certain R and L combinations. Certain words are inevitably the last ones habituated into conversation. Examples of these difficult words are girl, world, real, pearl, and twirl. One may ask, why these particular words? Well, there's a lot of work involved getting all of the speech production components synchronized in order to reach the habituation level, most especially when some of these more difficult words are used in conversation. Examples of three speech production components. Fluidity, which is the movement with ease from one oral location to another oral location. Voicing, 
turning voice on or off within single words and from word to word. Lip rounding, incorporating lip rounding naturally without compromising R production. These words are particularly difficult in those respects. For the purposes of this course, let's inspect one of those troublesome words, keeping the previously mentioned speech production components in mind. Doing so will make it easier to understand our client's difficulties. Among the most notorious is the word girl. Before reading ahead, see if you can think of possible reasons why this is one of those toughies to habituate. Okay, enough time. Here's my take on it. We have the voiced posterior lingual sound, the G, the G, moving to a stressed er embedded in a monosyllabic word, which we know is difficult. Then lip rounding occurs during the transition from movement one to, myth, to movement two, and remember the earlier lip rounding discussion, then to a vowelized L sound. Now, in many languages other than English, the L is consistently produced on the incisive papilla, the spot on the alveolar ridge, or dentalized, as in Spanish. In English, the vowelized L leaves the tongue basically hanging in midair. Thus, the client's tongue tip has no home base throughout the production of the word girl. There is no guidance for the anterior portion of the tongue in this word, and it often just gets lost in space.